Hey everyone, welcome to a new video, welcome to my channel, my name is Maaike. Today's video is going to be one out of five parts of my annual decluttering series. I am posting all five parts in March. Part one is going to be eyeshadow palettes, part two is going to be base products, so foundations, etc. Part three is going to be cheek products, so blush, bronzer, highlight. Part four is going to be lips and part five is going to be everything eye related that is not an eyeshadow palette. Um, I'm, I'm doing one of these videos every single year and I feel that these need a disclaimer, they just do. Uh, step number one, you need to know about my makeup collection that I don't get a whole lot of PR. I buy most of my makeup myself, meaning I carefully select the products that I decide to buy, which makes it a lot more difficult to declutter. So I'm not going to get rid of like 50% of everything I own. And when I get rid of things, it's usually because it's too old or I'm no longer interested in it or whatever the reason might be. So that also means, and this is disclaimer number two, that I won't be sending any makeup to people who ask for it. I'm not going to be putting this in giveaways. I personally feel very uncomfortable sending used makeup to people that I don't know. So that's something that you do need to know. And disclaimer number three, I am now realizing that my makeup collection is becoming like is getting to that stage where I have products that I'm willing to use. I'm like, yes, I want to use this. But then I also have some products that I would like to keep around for video purposes. So for comparisons or for like video ideas that I have in the future. So I will be taking some products out, but then I will put in like a box or something for future reference and then I'll get rid of it. Or I'll, I just want to have like a space where I keep products for referencing purposes. So that's something that I'm also going to be doing in today's video. So I really hope you enjoy watching this uh, and let's just get to the declutter. So welcome to my eyeshadow palette declutter. And this is the drawer that I'm showing you right now because it's the one that I think I will be decluttering most from. Um, this is where I keep my drugstore a palettes. One drawer down is where I keep my more high-end stuff. So. I will be showing you that drawer in more detail because we're going to go through that drawer. However, these ones I'm all going to take out. I'm going to put them on my table to show you what I'm getting, getting rid of. So let's just get to the declutter. So welcome to the eyeshadow palette declutter. Uh, we are starting with the part that's going to be easiest and where I'm going to get rid of most. I definitely have a number for this declutter that I, of what I would like to get rid of. And that is 50 palettes. Uh, last year I got rid of 40. And I know that in this part of the collection, I'm going to get rid of most because this thing right here is mainly Makeup Revolution and most of those are going to go because I'm just a bit done with Makeup Revolution. Um, so let's just get straight, uh, straight to it because I have a lot, as you know, uh, and I just need to make room for new stuff. Uh, this is an empty MAC palette and I'm going to get rid of it because it's just too big and bulky and... Yeah, I just, this is just not great. So I'm going to get rid of that. And then I have this cubby right here. So let's talk about this one first. Let me make sure it's on here. And in here I've put, I've tried to put all of these monochromatic palettes by ColourPop. Those are not going to go anywhere because those I, I've only recently got these in the past few months and I still need to test these out. And anything that I haven't tried yet, is not going to be decluttered by any means. So these are probably the only eyeshadows that you will have seen me haul in recent months that are even going to make an appearance in this video because this is not an eyeshadow palette collection. This is just a declutter and something I'm going to declutter is this. This is the Essence Pink Glitter Show eyeshadow palette and look at how pretty that is. Oh, can you see this? Look at how pretty that is. I don't have any space, huh? Let me see if I can move this a bit here and then I can move this over here yeah then I can hold the palettes here <laughs> I think that's better uh, so this is the Essence Gl a Pink Glitter Show eyeshadow palette and this has really nice quality that was stuck uh, this has really nice quality uh, ooh, I'm sticking my fingers in there now too um, and it's just a bit warm toned for my liking, so I actually do want to keep it around because I just think this packaging is super special, so this is just going to go into my makeup memories box that I have not yet moved that much to, but 
that is definitely something like a nice keepsake, I think. These at the front here are all of my sleek palettes, and I've decided that I'm going to break up my sleek collection and get rid of a few of these because I don't use these as much. And now that I have this, I have all the colors that I need to make different looks. And that's what I was keeping these sleek palettes around for because they, some of them have unique color stories or unique ideas behind them, and that's why I was keeping them around. So the first one I want to get rid of is this one, the Rockstars Hidden Gems Collection. I bought this because I didn't want to spend the money on the Moondust palette by Urban Decay. And this had a very similar green in it, and that's why I ended up buying this. But I ended up just never using it on my face. So that's a, it's also a good reason to know that, okay, I should not have bought that um, uh, that I, like, a good justification for not having bought the Moondust palette, because I don't think I would have used it much. I also delegated this Urban Decay Deluxe Shadow Box to this part of my eyeshadow palette collection. And this is one, again, this is one that I want to keep around for video purposes, actually, because since I still had this, they released a Naked Honey palette, and this honey shade here, is also in the Naked Honey, so I was able to actually use this and sort of show a comparison. So I think I want to hang on to all of my Urban Decay stuff from now on. I think I've only discolored one Urban Decay palette in my lifetime, but this one, even though it's super old and I no longer use it, I do want to keep it around for like nostalgia as well as comparison purposes. So that's going to go into a separate box. Then in here, uh, at the front, I have the ones by Sleek that I like the most. So these ones, so the Storm, the Calm Before the Storm, the, the blue-toned one, the green Garden of Eden, the cool-toned Enchanted Forest, the very warm-toned Sunset, and the warm-toned Under Horizon I want to keep, because if I reach for a Sleek palette, it's going to be one of those. Um, but here we also have a few where I'm like, ah, and I think this one too, yeah. And then this is a stack of six sleep palettes that I'm torn about. This is the Aqua Lagoon collection, and I was keeping this around mainly for that coral shade, but I think something similarly may actually be in the main squeeze palette by ColourPop, and I actually have a single now by ColourPop called Making Moves, I think, that is very similar, so I don't need this palette anymore for that reason. The Good Girl I'm very torn about. This was limited edition, and as you can see, it's an all-pink palette. So I may want to keep this around for now, so I can put it up against the Ooh La La, because that's like my plan to use the Colourpop palettes, and if I have like palettes with like a similar color story, I sort of want to compare the two. So I may want to hang on to that. Ooh. And then we have the Acid palette, and this I'm going to get rid of. I was keeping it around for some of these neon shades, but I have just found that they're not performing as well anymore, so these can go. The Showstoppers was one I won in a giveaway, so I didn't pick this out myself. And this has really stunning jewel tones, but I don't think I've ever used this on my face yet. So, we can be short and sweet about this one. The Nordic Skies is the pastel palette, but again, I feel I have better pastel shades in other palettes, like these soft greens and like these kind of shades over here, I have in the um, new uh, Lime Crime Venus XL, I have some of these like soft blues in the Blue Moon and other blue palettes that I have, so I don't feel I need to keep this around. And this is one of their neutral palettes, this is the All Night Long, and I was keeping it around for the copper shade, but to be quite honest, I have plenty of other coppers that I like much better. And then these are my three OG, like, neutral palettes, so I do want to keep these. This is the Vintage Romance, the Ultra Mattes version 2, Nude, uh, the O Naturel, and Oh So Special. So I'm going to keep quite a good chunk of my sleek palettes, but not all of them. Um, so that's a couple of them already done. And this is my luxury selection, and these are not going to go because these cost me an arm and a leg. And that is my only justification for hanging on to these. I'm very well aware, but I have Dior over here, Charlotte Tilbury, and these are my Chanel quads. Not getting rid of those. Let's move on to this one here. This is the palette that I'm currently trying out. This I used in my, put in my Shop My Stash to try out, and I haven't gotten around to it yet when I'm filming this video. By the time this goes live, I will have used it, so I will update you in my next Shop My Stash 
which should be up on Tuesday, to let you know how I feel about this palette, because I'm hoping to uh, use it during the week following the filming of this declutter. So this one I'm going to hang on to. Um, and then I have some um, other palettes like Overflow lying on top. This is a new Catrice palette that I've only used one so far, so I have to put this to the test a bit more. But so far I'm liking it, so I think I want to hang on to that. This massive Catrice palette, you guys, I need to keep this. This is such a lovely neutral palette by Catrice, really good quality. It's a bit big for my liking, but it is a really good one. So I want to keep those two. This Makeup Revolution palette I tried last month. And I think you can see it coming that I'm going to be decluttering this one. In fact, let me show you this. Aren't these like essentially the same kind of palette? They are. Um, so I'll keep the Catrice, not this one. This has the glitters. And while this golden glitter is stunning, these are such, such a pain to take off. Not a great thing at all, and uh, yeah, it made me realize that the Huda Beauty New Nude is one I definitely do not need. Then in here, apart from this silver glitter show, which I am going to keep by Essence, can you guess why? Because it's Cool Tones. This one I'm going to keep, um, because this is lovely quality, really great palette by Essence. So I'm going to hang on to that for sure. Um, but I'm going to go through all of these Makeup Revolution ones now, because Makeup Revolution and me, I've just realized that for... Well, let's just say that the color stories do not really appeal to me anymore. The two I definitely want to keep are these two mini pal palettes. This is the Chalk Mint. This is great for travel, which is why I want to hang on to these two, because they're just really great travel palettes. This is the Rose Gold. So those two I want to keep. Two I also want to keep are this wa these Water and Air Zodiac Sign palettes. These are lovely. They're all shimmer though, but they are really lovely palettes. That's some of the best quality Makeup Revolution has done in recent years. What's this? Oh yeah. Um, and then I think everything else is going to go. So I have the, sub, uh, the subculture dupe. This is the Iconic Division, Reloaded Iconic Division. Um, that was very gray toned, didn't like it at all. This one I'm still a bit on the fence about. This is the Violet palette. And I like some of the purples that are in here. And this is one of the reasons why I'm going to get rid of so many of my Makeup Revolution stuff. You get so many neutrals in all of these palettes and your, your eye is drawn in to this purple and that purple and that purple and that shade and that shade. But then everything else is just neutrals. So I would much rather have this be like half the size and just the purples, then it would have worked a lot better. Like make this into this. Then, then I think I would try it again. Plus I now have a lot of purples in my collection. I bought this right at the start of the purple craze, but I now have other purple palettes or purples in palettes that I just like a lot better than this. So this is gonna go. This I'm also a bit torn about. This is the mini, like the larger version of that mini palette, and it has some stunning shade, but shades, but it's also quite warm. The only shades I want to keep it around for is these two, and that's not a good reason to keep a palette around, Micah. So we're going to get rid of the mint chocolate. This is the chocolate vice, and this is very sort of peachy shades. Oh, let me see. These are peachy shades, very sort of sweet peach without those greens. Um, this was a really lovely palette when I first got it, but I just have these kind of shades a million times over in other palettes, so I don't have to keep it around for that. And then, let me make sure I have the room I need. These two are perhaps the shame of my makeup collection, because I bought these a year and a half ago and I've never used them. This is one of the reasons why I don't get rid of the stuff that I haven't used yet, because I definitely aim to use everything before decluttering it. This is the Macarons palette. As you can see, lovely cool tone shades in here, and I love these like bluey shades, but just the palette as a whole doesn't appeal to me. And this I bought because I don't own the Yes Please palette by Colourpop, and this has very similar shades, but I don't use it. I've never used it. I don't have any interest in using them. And the same goes for these five palettes. 
This is the Naked Underneath. This was limited edition. This is a stunning cool tone eyeshadow palette. It's animal fur inspired. The proceeds or part of the proceeds of these palettes went to animal shelters or like animal welfare. And I have to say that I like some of the shades in here a lot. But again, have it in other palettes. No need to keep this. So, and I also like this. I, I've never liked that. <laughs> This is the Revolution Pro palette in Trends Mischief Maker, and I ha uh, hung on to this last year because it had more of a rainbow vibe. By now, again, I have these shades in other palettes that I just like the quality of a lot more. So that's gonna go. We'll tackle these in a minute. This is the Makeup Revolution Flawless 4. I kept this one around because I was thinking, oh, that could be a nice like travel palette because it gives you a lot of options. I just think it's too big for travel, and I therefore haven't used it since I last decluttered my, my collection. Need I say more, this is gonna go. And then we have the Soap and the Soap Extra Spice. And these I'm very torn about because you guys, in terms of Makeup Revolution, these are the best palettes they've done. Ever. Ugh. So the only reason why I never use these is because the color stories just aren't that perfect. Like, I keep this extra spice palette around for that silver shade, but I have silvers in other palettes, and I have some stunning si uh, singles, uh, one by ColourPop, I have a Kiko single that does something very similarly. So I feel I do not need to keep it for that reason. It does have a couple of stunning plum shades, but one thing I've never gotten with this palette is how warm toned it is, and then you get that one bright silver shade. So I'll get rid of the extra spice. And then this one, similar thing, like you get some more cool tones over here and then warm tones here. In terms of like well-roundedness and versatility, I think this is one of the best Makeup Revolution palettes on the market. But again, I never reach for it, so I'm going to get rid of those. Mm, that's one, that's another cubby done. All right, and then we have this one. And here as well, I can get rid of some things. Uh, on top are these Focalore eyeshadow palettes, and I was sent these in PR. This is like the only PR in my entire makeup collection, and I know I want to keep the smile and a secret around, because this is an old yellow and an old green palette, so I can put these up against my ColourPop palettes, but these do not have to stay in my main collection, so I'll keep these for video purposes. So those are going to go. Uh, and then I have the Perth palette, which is lovely, but again, you get a lot of warm tones, and then you get these really nice purpley shades. Very nice quality, but I just don't really like the color story altogether, so that's why I'm going to get rid of that. Plus, all of these Focalore palettes have pressed glitters in them, which is not my favorite. These three Essence palettes. These are discontinued. They were limited edition. The Ariel one was my favorite. Such a stunning palette. The Jasmine palette was perhaps my least favorite because the shimmers in here just didn't do much, but I do really like the color story here. And the Belle palette has all your standard mattes. I'm not gonna lie, I'm going to keep these around for collector's purposes. So these are gonna go in my Makeup Memories box. These are not going anywhere, but they're not gonna stay in my main palette collection because I, know, I don't think I'll ever use them again. Elf Earth and Ocean, wow, love this palette. Like, Again, and this has a stunning silver too, so I don't need to keep the Sof palette. This is, oh, this is so stunning. Every look I did with this was amazing, so I'm going to keep that. Then in here are a lot of Essence and Catrice stuff, so let me see if I can find some Essence things for you. Uh, I think this is Catrice. Is that everything by Catrice? Yeah, I already talked about the other Catrice stuff. Okay, so Essence and Catrice then. Um, um, most of this stuff can also go because I don't really use it. This one right here, the Crystal Power Palette by Essence, was not great quality. I don't know what Essence was thinking because right around this time they started releasing pretty good eyeshadow quality, but not in this palette. 
The one that they released around the same time that sadly you can no longer get but that I did really like is this one. This is the Beautiful palette and this is just really really nice neutrals. And this is also, this is, it's cardboard and it's pretty sturdy. Uh, I like to travel with that too. Another palette that I've always loved by Essence are these little My Must Haves palettes. These are really, really stunning. The four shades I selected happen to be really good. Not all of these single pens that you could select from were as great, but mine are really lovely. And again, for travel, these four shades are perfect. This Naked Heat Dupe was limited edition by Essence and I just, I can get rid of this. This is again one of those things I tried for my blog. Same goes to this, the Good Day Sydney palette. Lovely. It has sort of like Makeup by Mario Anastasia kind of vibes, the master palette. That's what it reminds me of. That's not my cup of tea. And we have the Hello New York palette and this is what I'm going to keep because I love the cool tones that you get in here. So those I want to keep. Catrice. <clears throat> yeah. Let's just say that, apart from Essence, also Catrice has been upping their game when it comes to their eyeshadow quality. So apart from the other two that I'm already keeping, I am keeping the Crystallized Rose Quartz. These are stunning neutrally shades, and again, it's quite small and handy for travel, so I do want to keep it around. This Superbia Volume 2, I'm already keeping the Hello New York by, New uh, by Essence, and this is quite similar to that, so I don't need to keep both of them, and I felt that this wasn't as great quality. Then we have the Exotic Traveler palette. This is super skinny, perfect for travel. The shades in here are quite nice, but I never reach for this. So that is gonna go. And I think that by now it's time to get rid of this. This is the Yellow Submarine Quad. I kept this around for years because I felt it was quite unique, but I feel I have these kind of like grungy green tones in other palettes right now, and I just never reach for this. So this can go. And then these three eyeshadow palettes by Catrice, Rust, Matte, and Bronze. These are always a bit hit and miss, and I always kept these around for reference because they redo like different color stories every time. The Matte is probably my favorite one, and they still do it, but these I just never reach for, so these have got to go. And this is the rest of what's in here, and here again I know I'm going to get rid of quite a few bits. These two NARS quads, or duos I should say, together they make a quad, that's how I bought them. This is Isolde, and this is Cordura, and they are really lovely quality. It's just bronzy browns, and that's just not my cup of tea at the moment. So I'm going to get rid of those because I have plenty of other bron bronzy shades. The Milani Earthy Elements palette, this was lovely when it came out. But I just really much, very much prefer these ones, which Milani has discontinued. So the Soft and Sultry and the Most Loft Mets I'm keeping, because those are lovely. And then I still have, because I got rid of the Catrice matte palette, I'm keeping the Milani one so that I have a drugstore matte palette. Then here I have a CoverGirl and a Max Factor palette. And with these, like the quality of these is so, so nice. Like, this is great quality. I just never reach for these. Like, I, I have peaches in my Too Faced Peachy palette, like the Sweet Peach and the Peachy Mattes. Do I need that? No. And this is sort of like cool tones. And I like these shades. Like, this is really, like, classic. It doesn't get more classic than this, you could say. So I do really like this, but I'm going to get rid of it just because I never use it. The Body Shop one, this I'm going to get rid of. I've mainly kept it around for that rose gold shade, but you will see in a minute that I'm going to keep another palette around for its rose gold shade, and I like that better. So um, that is going to go. NYX Ultimate Brights palette, I bought this off of the recommendation of a friend of mine saying like, yeah, that's a great rainbow palette if you layer it over a white base, and she's absolutely right. It's just that by now, I have much better rainbow palettes. The only shade in here that I would want to keep it around for is that mint shade, but I now own the Mint to Be palette by ColourPop. So I have that. No longer necessary. That can go. This NYX palette is the Full Throttle palette, and this little quad I'm a bit torn about because I mainly bought it for those two shades, like the teal and the gray. 
and I feel I have these kind of shades in my Chanel quads. But this, again, I also haven't used a lot. So maybe I can keep, keep it for now. Like, hang on to it for this round. This is a maybe. Maybe. Kiko Milano. Ooh, I'm smudging everything here. Kiko uh, Cranberry Quad. Um, this is lovely quality, but I never, ever reach for this. <laughs> this is just one of those things that, again, when it comes to these tones, I do like these tones, though, so I'll keep... Yeah. Maybe. Like, these quads are maybes. I never really reach for quads. Same goes for this. This is Makeup Designery, and this is a, like, makeup artist brand that, and I've had these shades for a while, but these are lovely. These are stunning mattes, so I'm going to keep that. And then I have these ones left, and the NYX Perfect Filter All of You palette I'm going to keep. Remember what I said about Catrice, that I had those grungy shades in another palette? I was talking about this one. <laughs> and by the way, this is a better alternative, I feel, to the subculture than the Straight Up Dupe by Makeup Revolution that I'm getting rid of. Uh, this gives you the same vibes as subculture, with fewer shades, but also pretty decent quality. Alright, so I do want to keep that. And then these two by MUA, I'm going to get rid of. This one is a dupe for Naked 3. This is the Elysium palette, and I used to travel with this a lot, but now I have this, and now I use that. That gives me a similar vibe, so I'm going to get rid of that, and then I'm also going to get rid of this. This is the Fire Vixen. This is super warm toned, but I just thought it was fun to try it at the time, and so I bought it, and uh, yeah, it's a, it's a really nice palette, but currently not something that I need. So that's why this is gonna go. These two. I do like both of these. I'm going to keep them. Because I'm getting rid of a lot here. So last but not least, we are going to go through this drawer. And in here, there are going to be a couple of things that I'm going to get rid of, but not that much. So I'm not going to go through everything. Because I kind of know what I want to get rid of and what I don't want to get rid of. That's just the way it is. <laughs> um, and um, so things I'm not going to get rid of are these two Jeffree Star products. These were lying like next to my makeup storage because they're so big and bulky. But I actually hope that after I declutter I can fit them back in. This is my Cleona palette filled with singles. I actually want to try and move out my singles and see if I can put it in a drawer above after I've decluttered everything. These Juvia's Place palettes are not going anywhere. This is the Magic and the Masquerade. These palettes are lying on top for a reason. Uh, this is the BH Cosmetics Royal Affair palette. And you may have, re you may remember from me talking about this, that this palette I like the quality of, but I don't like the color story. Which is why I actually got some new BH uh, products to try. But I want to keep this because I want to do a video about disappointing eyeshadow palettes in the future. So I want to hang on to this for video purposes, but then it's going to go. Two other palettes that I'm not a big fan of, but that I want to keep around, are these two Zoeva palettes. This is the Rose Golden and the Opulence palette, and I just want to keep these also for video purposes. I have a lot of Zoeva palettes lying in the back here, and I really like these. It's just that these color stories just don't really appeal to me, and I hope to be able to do a... Uh, like another Zoeva eyeshadow palette collection some point this year and then I want to be able to feature these so these are going to not go anywhere just yet but I am moving them out of my collection and the same goes for this Urban Decay palette <laughs> the Naked Basics this has been discontinued sadly because I do really like the shades in here it's just that I never really reach for a lot of old matte palettes and if I have to choose one, it's not this one, but it's Urban Decay. The packaging is gorgeous, and I just want to keep this for reference purposes. So it's going to go, but not like away, away. Um, these two Naked Basics, I am going to hang on to because these are lovely. I just think I need to put them in like a different spot of my makeup collection because currently I'm not reaching for them a lot. But those I want to keep even though those have been discontinued. And then over here, this is where all of my Urban Decay eyeshadow palettes live. And these are all going to stay here. Um, these are not going anywhere, but right here at the front, which you can see, I keep 
two of my Kat Von D palettes. And these two, I really like the quality of. <laughs> I really, really do. So I really like the quality of these two, but I don't reach for them a lot. I do have to say, though, that in terms of basic mattes, this palette does it all. So that's why, it's going to, why I'm going to keep that around. And then this one, the Monarch palette, no matter how stunning I find this, it's time for me to... Am I really going to declutter it? Yeah, there's only one shade in here that I really like, and that's that rose gold shade. And I have another palette that has a really perfect rose gold, so I don't need to keep it, even though I really like the packaging. <laughs> but this is an older palette, so this is one that I'm seriously going to declutter. Um, other than that, none of my Too Faced ones are going to go. None of my Anastasia palettes are going to go. My Laura Rock palettes are going to stay. Hmm, over here. Ooh, this one I'm not going to, going to get rid of, but I'll show you these ones in a minute. So I have my the Balm palettes here, the Nude Tude, Nude Dude, and the Nude Beach. And I never, ever reach for these. Like, I will reach over Lorac, like, I will reach for Lorac, Anastasia, Too Faced, Urban Decay, Tarte, over these when it comes to neutrals. Am I going to... I can't get rid of these. Like, this is the collector in me. When it comes to eyeshadow palettes, I am terrible. So maybe I'm just going to keep these for, like, reference purposes. Maybe the Kat Von D as well. Oh, it pains me. No, I can't do this. Ah! I'm not ready. I'm not ready, you guys. Oh, uh, like these are when it comes to eyeshadow palettes, these are simply my favorites. <laughs> mm. But I don't use these. I never use these. But this is great for a smoky eye, and I like comparing this to the Naked 3, and this is a really nice warm tone palette that actually does work on me. Yeah, I'm going to keep it for video purposes, <laughs> but they're going to go out of this drawer because I never use them. And I think I'll do the same with the Kat Von D. Am I terrible? I'm terribly sorry. If you were here for like a cutthroat eyeshadow palette declutter, this is not it. Let's just talk about something that I do want to get rid of then. The Anastasia World Traveler palette. I love the quality of this, but I've had this for years and I never reach for this. So this one I feel very comfortable about getting rid of. No doubt in my mind about that one. Then I have my little dose of color palettes here. Too Faced, Too Fe uh, Just Beachy Mattes. This palette I almost decluttered last year, and I'm so glad I kept it because I'm now... Ooh, this is popping out. I'm now keeping this over my Kat Von D palette and over the Body Shop palette because it has that rose gold shade, and someone said, oh, you can take that shade out and then just pass on the palette to someone else. But that I feel is weird, so I don't want to do that. So I'll keep the Viseyard. Everything else that's here, like these little Huda Beauty palettes that I have over here, those are all great. Let's just talk about... Oh, the Balm palettes that I definitely want to keep. Let's talk about that. The Meat Matte palettes. Like these, I... Meat Matte Nude, Matrimony, and Matador. Not going anywhere. My Nabla palettes, the Soul Blooming and the Secret, Love those. Those are not going anywhere. Over here, I have my ColourPop Dream Street palette. Not going anywhere, but I think I'm going to put it in my other drawer. And then here I have the My Little Pony Pure palette. And this palette, you guys, I used this when I wanted to get into color. I wasn't sure about color, and this palette just helped me so much but I never use it anymore because I now have colorful palettes and now that I feel comfortable using them, I don't feel the need to keep this around. But I think I want to hang on to it for nostalgia reasons. I know, I know, I'm terrible, I'm terrible. Nostalgia, I know. I know I want to get rid of this. Don't hate me. Yes, Colourpop the Fame. I didn't like this because it doesn't, not because it has bad quality, but because a lot of the shades in here are just very samey samey and I just can't get very versatile looks out of it. If you're looking for something very bland and basic, this is nice. It's a good palette. Not my cup of tea though. 
my Juvia's Place palettes are all staying. So these ones, <laughs> oh, and the mini breaker is going to stay too. These are all of my Juvia's Place ones, so those are going to stay. The slush palette is awesome, so that's going to stay. And then I have a bunch of singles in here. This is the Morphe Jaclyn Hill Vault. Mine is fine. I don't get people ranting about this saying it's bad quality. Mine is fine. I'm going to keep it. Pat McGrath was way too expensive to get rid of. So I'm, I'm going to keep that. And then over here, we have singles. And I'm just going to move these out. Because here they never, ever get used. So I just need to move this out to another drawer. And then here in the back I have my more indie palettes. Oceanic, Desert Dusk, Tarte, Layla 2. Oh yeah, I know there's at least one thing that I can get rid of here. Where did it go? This one I would like to get rid of. This is the Bad Habit Artistry palette. This is the Makeup by Mario dupe. Um, Master palette by Mario dupe from Anastasia. And this was lovely, nice quality, but these shades, I, nah, it was just not my cup of tea. So that's going to go as well. And I'm actually contemplating whether I should get rid of this. This is the Violet Voss hashtag palette. But now, like, now these, like, super yellowy tones are kind of hip and happening. Like, I don't need the Jaclyn Hill and Morphe, like, second palette, because it has this. It has these kind of shades, so I think I'll, I'll hang on to that for now. And then I think we've gone through most of what's in here. Hmm. Alright, so it's getting a bit dark to film, but my camera just died, so I hope I can fit, quickly finish it. Uh, I was looking at these last palettes right here in the back, which are my Zoeva palettes, and I think I can actually also move this matte palette out of my collection. For the same reason as with the other Zoeva palettes, I'm not going to get rid of it completely. I am going to hang on to it so I can keep my Zoeva collection intact. Um, but yeah, that's just the product that I think I'm going to move out just to have a bit more space in here. And then I'm going to keep the rest in here. So that's what, what it all looks like. Um, so let's just have a look at how much I actually got rid of. All right, so these are all the palettes I'm going to get rid of. These two stacks over here are 12 palettes that I do want to keep it around for like comparison, video purposes, those kind of things, or nostalgia like the one here at the top. And I've decided to actually add the Essence Pink Glitter Show to this, even though I love the packaging of this. Um, I'm keeping the Silver Glitter Show, so do I really want to keep it around just for the packaging? Not really. But there are 44 palettes here that I'm getting rid of. So all together, it's over 50, so I'm super duper happy about that. So thank you very much for watching. This was my eyeshadow palette declutter. I hope you enjoyed it. Please give it a thumbs up if you liked it. Subscribe to my channel if you'd like to see more by me. I'm currently going to, uh, like, in the midst of, like, decluttering and doing all that. So there are more declutters coming your way. So if you like a good declutter, uh, then stay tuned for more. And for now, thank you very much for watching. Bye.